all right, Coach Angie. Uh, man, talking to you about this whole situation. Um, we're in a uh, we're we're in a, a very odd time here in the United States of America. First things first. Thursday, where were you when the, when you guys found out? Where was Ryder Wrestling? Where were you at? Where were you and your coaches and your athletes at when you got the news the NCAA Division One tournament was canceled in Minneapolis? We were we actually had an early practice at eleven thirty because we have a break in between classes uh, Thursdays uh, and Tuesdays between eleven thirty and one. So we had done our workouts and then we were just following Twitter. We were waiting for emails. We were you know waiting for notification to see what was going to happen if anything and. Um, then I actually had a, uh, individual workout with my son. He was preparing for the New Jersey youth state tournament, which was supposed to be yesterday, uh, which also ended up getting canceled. So we were actually driving home and Nick called me, my assistant and, uh, said, did you see it? I said, see what he goes, they canceled it. So I was actually driving home in the car with my son from work, um, after, you know, trying to follow it all day. And it was just such a somber moment. It was just like quiet over the car. Like he's like, really it got canceled. And then I had to tell him a couple hours later that his tournament had gotten canceled, all that stuff. So it was just a, it was a tough day in Hainsey household for sure. You know, you lived through nine 11 and you guys aren't far from the whole epicenter of nine 11. And obviously they, they, they attacked our Eastern seaboard. Um, DC, you guys aren't far from DC. Obviously you're not far from the city in New York city. Um, right. and, and that's the best thing that I have to go by to compare this to, to people. And I know, you know, I just talked to Patty Gallagher, uh, you know, he was, he's a 17 year old kid. Your son, how old your son? He's 14. So we're talking about two teenagers who don't even understand. They've never seen, and they've never lived anything like this. Right. Um, right. They played the NCAA basketball, the final four through world war two. Did you know that? I did know that. That's insane. And now we're it's never even shut down Broadway through all those wars. This is the first time they've ever shut down Broadway. The whole thing is just so, and I know there's people who are, ah, this is, you know, this is, a, it's overkill. It's too much. Um, you know, we, we, you and I both work in education. We work with young people and you yep. really, the liability issues are just so high. Off the charts. You, you you have to do what you're being told to do to protect the young kids that we work with. No it's question. It's just that simple. And, 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 you know, oh, this is to protect old people. Sure. Sure. But I, I got parents who are 70, 71, 72. Yeah. You probably got, if your parents are still My dad alive, is 70, 71. There you go. We got parents the same age. So, yeah, we, we want them to live. You know, we, we need that. Absolutely. We need them. I, I want my dad around and and he's in, you know, he's in a really unique situation where my mom's down in Florida. He's up here. He wants to get back. And I'm like, dude, you can't fly. You can't no, fly. No, you can't. And he came back to watch my nephew who, who qualified. He won his district. He won his sectional. And, you know, he was on course to, to be competitive for Oak Harbor where we're sure. from. And, and it's just wild because that's why he's here. He's here to watch wrestling. My, my, and I had another nephew who qualified for, as a freshman to their district. So that's why my dad's here. It's for wrestling. So this whole thing is just, it's surreal. Would you say that, is that the way, the best way to describe it? Absolutely. It's something that you could never expect. You know, you were hearing about it and then all of a sudden it was like a, a rolling domino that you could not stop. Once the NBA made that decision, um, it just rolled to everything else. And, and when it starts that big, it's rolling downhill. Yeah. Everything smaller than it, which is unfortunately the NCAA, youth wrestling, schools, you name it. Everything's following suit no matter what. It's like the snowball down the hill, man. It just, that's the fact yep. where things just keep building. And, um, you know, I got a buddy. You probably know him. You remember him from Garfield, uh, Artie and Ramadani. He's uh, yes. New yes. York, New Jer Newark, New Jersey. Uh, he works for the Port of He worked for the Port Authority. Now he works at Newark Airport. He's a cop over that way. Um, he's had a couple of different jobs. He worked at World Trade Center One, the new one that they built, the Freedom Tower. He's been yep. all around, right? He's essential. They don't. Have, we don't. Those guys don't get time off. No, they you know? don't. And you it's guys, pretty scary. Like if you're in that kind of field or you're in the medical field, you have zero choice but you have to do your job and you have to be even more precautious than what we're doing, just protecting the few yeah. people that stay at our house. Yeah, Artie and Ramadani is going to work every day. His kids yeah. are off school. But he's going to work. Um, Yep. They just canceled us here in Ohio through April 3rd. April 6th is, the, is a Monday. So that's when the first time we would go back. But 
St. Edward is canceled through April 20th. That's um, when my kids' schools are canceled through. Okay. So it, that's five weeks. That's half a summer vacation. Deb. Yes. We're probably not going back to school. I listened to the governor of Ohio, Mike DeWine, talk today. And I'm just gaining a whole lot of wisdom from people in this because, you know, I love to talk to people and I like to, to hear, have you guys tell your story. But Terrell DeLagna, the guy's such a smart yeah. guy, right? I mean, <clears throat> just, just talking to him and, and uh, I gained so much wisdom from you guys. But what do you think that you want? What do you take from this? How do you, this is such a surreal thing. Nobody knows what to do with themselves. Colin Moore doesn't know what to do with himself. Zach Carson doesn't know what to do with himself. These are fifth year seniors. Jesse, one of your guys, he's a fifth year senior, isn't he? Yep. Yep. They don't know what to do with uh, them. Three fifth year seniors that were national qualifiers that are just, you know, SOL, so to speak. Yeah. Um, They're just out of luck, man. You you know, you just, I mean, you can keep out optimism and hope that the NCAA comes by and back and does the right thing for those kids and allows them the discretion to whether they continue another year or not. But there's so many layers to that onion that you have to keep peeling back with credits and, and, you know, scholarships and, and enrollment and all, you know, there's, there's millions of topics of discussion that everybody's thought about at that point. So it's just, I don't even know how to advise our kids. I just told them, I love you. I think you're great kids. You've worked your butt off and it's not fair, but life isn't fair and there's nothing I can do for you, you know? And it's, it's like, like you said earlier, we're in education, but, and we're supposed to help young kids and guide them and advise them and, and be mentors to them. I got no idea what to say to these kids because this is unprecedented. You know, it's like everybody just has to go back and just be with their families and be isolated for as long as they tell us to be so that we can get back together and hopefully, you know, return to some sort of normalcy, uh, whether that's five weeks, eight weeks, 10 weeks, whatever it may be, you know, but it's, it's, it's heart wrenching to not be able to explain something to the kids that you've coached and worked with so long that you don't have an answer for them. And that's really hard. And you're, you know, like a lot of these guys, you're like a second father to them. Some of them don't even have a father. You're, you are their father. And, and it, I think it's real hard when you got someone who just, they can't, the person you always look to for answers for four or five years, maybe even your life. Now you don't have an answer for them. That's hard. Yeah. I mean, the, the, it really is because I was, I told them, I said, you know, at this point after when we had that Thursday call that uh, Nick and I, we found out that the NCAAs were canceled. I, you know, I sent a text, called the guys. I said, look, you just got to go home after your classes tomorrow and play it by ear. I'll keep you posted on anything I find out. I had to send a text to all their parents, you know, saying I'm sorry for something that I never even did or had anything to do with. But I was just sorry for their their son losing out on the opportunity to pursue their dream and and to and to see it through to the end. I mean, whether they, you know, went 0 and 2 or they were a national champ, I wanted them the ability to see it through to the end. And that's that's just not fair. And I know life isn't fair, but. Man, when you pour your heart and soul into something, you want to at least have it finished, you know, under on your own terms, and that's not what happened. John, you're an All American. You're third in the country for rider, right? <clears throat> yes. Jesse's not going to get the. He's probably not going to get that opportunity. He's a four seed um, in, in a weight class where he can make some noise. He can make a national final. He, he's right there. Um, you know, a guy like that, I mean, what do you even say to those guys right now? What do you say to a guy like that right now? <sighs> I just told him, I said, Jesse, you're an amazing kid. I said, you've done everything that we've ever asked you to do uh, to the best of your ability. I said, we've been actually like gathering paperwork to try to uh, apply for a fifth year or sixth year for him because of his transfer from Binghamton. There's some medical things that we uh, can build a case on. So with that and this, um, I'm still trying to talk him into using it, though, because he's not sure what he's going to do. He doesn't know what his future holds. He doesn't know if he wants to pour his entire heart and soul into the lifestyle again because it is such a disciplined and and sacrificed lifestyle that it's hard to duplicate year after year after year. And he's in a great spot. Like We were really excited about his opportunity. I mean, when you're seated fourth in the tournament at the NCAAs, you've done a lot of things right. And you're in position to get on that podium in one of those eight spots. And he had wrestled so well at the conference tournament, and he was on target. He was on target, ready to do this. And it's like he just took away a dream. His dad was devastated. I had to talk him off the ledge 
on a conversation because he's so uh, such a passionate dad as well. But no matter what I said to Jesse, he just listened. He respectfully listened to me, but he was just – there was no getting through to him. I mean, there's there's nothing I could do to console him. There was nothing that I could do to, to make it easier of a pill to swallow. It was just – he was just totally devastated that, for lack of better terms. There was nothing I could do to talk him out of it. And selfishly, I was devastated for him, but in a good way because, I mean, as a coach, I haven't – as a head coach, I haven't had an All-American yet. And this is my third year. And I know we were going to have one, if not two, this year. Just the way our kids were wrestling, the attitude they had, the positions in the brackets, we were hopeful that that was going to happen. And <clears throat> that's me being selfish. But when this goes down, it's like, all right, I can't even put myself in those kids' shoes because this is beyond anything I've ever had to deal with. And I don't, I, I don't know how they handle it. I really don't. Who are your four national cars? Qualifiers: Laird, Delvecchia. Laird, Delvecchia, Sherry, and Cloud are heavyweight. Dean, Dean, you're 74. Dean, are 74. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. And then I you mean, know, another they, one. They were another one. Pete, Pete transferred, right? Yes, Pete transferred. Yeah, I mean that's another. But he one. didn't you know, make it out of the conference tournament. Yeah, but that that's crazy. That's that another guy though. Loaded. Think about that guy's whole year. Uh, What's that guy's year been like? Yeah. Now we're trying for another year for him as well because of uh, when he was at Rutgers, he had one of his best friends, uh, Sam Cowley, uh, uh, passed away. Okay. And he went through a pretty tough time at that moment. So we're putting forth paperwork for him as well at this time. So hopefully we get that. But he doesn't fall into the category of Jesse because Jesse at least qualified for the NCAA tournament. Pete's season was over. So yeah. I don't know how the NCAA is going to view that. So it's, I, I they have to do the right thing for these kids. They have to leave it up to the kids, in my opinion. I don't think there's any – and I know we finished 99% of our season, but that, that doesn't matter. This is unprecedented waters. They've already directed the, the schools to, you know, um, talk about legislation, talk about waivers, talk about all sorts of things to, to go uh, outside of the box, and, and I think that that's only fair. They've already given it to the spring sports. I think they need to give the, the winter athletes a chance to decide whether they want to use it as a year or not. John, this is such a, you know it's such a lifestyle thing when we talk about it. it. It is, it is. If you look at the UFC, Division One wrestling is the breeding ground for all your future champions. Stipe qualified for Cleveland State. Obviously, DC was a finalist. Cormier was a finalist for uh, you know Oklahoma State. We can go up and down the list all day, man. It, you know, um, yeah. Usman's a D two national champ. So this is such a tough lifestyle. You got to understand. As far as the intensity of their lifestyle and their training, most of those guys talk about that fighting's way easier in D1 wrestling. You, you realize that's a thing. A lot, you, you, <laughs> that's, that's, that's not me making that up. That's a, I, I've heard no, that on not. multiple occasions from those guys. Um, yes. You know, amateur wrestling in general, obviously Henry never wrestled uh, Division One, but, I mean, Henry's a very different. Henry's Henry. Henry's Henry, Henry right? We don't, we don't really put Henry in that. But, but, you know, I mean, you look at it, amateur wrestling is the toughest thing you can do. You know, obviously the fighting where you can kick and punch and knee someone, that's really the toughest thing you can do. But the toughest preparation for that is Division One wrestling. Colin Moore no said question. to me yesterday, he doesn't even know if he'd come back for a sixth year. That, that's how tough know. That, that's the that, Think that, about that, it. That, right? That, that's where the kids really don't understand because they're still dealing. They can't even think about that right now because they're still dealing with the emotion of the, of the loss of the season. You know what I mean? Like, they can't even – get to that part uh mentally because they haven't it hasn't settled in yet it's almost like a nightmare that you wake up tomorrow it's going to go away but it's 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 real i mean i walked into the office on friday nick and i drove up together because we live relatively close to to each other at our houses and we literally walked in the office and for the first time in my life as a wrestling coach i had no idea what to do in the office i i had no idea because i was in preparation mode for the ncaa's i was just bleeding in my heart for my kids, you know, trying to explain to them. My, one of my uh, team mentors um, uh, talked to me and he's like, he's like, what are you doing? Are you on campus? I said, I'm going home. I got to get out of here. I can't be here right now. And it just was so hard because I knew my kids had gone home and it's just, it's a slap in the face. And, and the, the, the lifestyle that Jesse and Ethan and Dean and cloud and all the other guys, 
they committed every day of every bit of their life to this opportunity and it just got ripped apart from them. And it's, it's, it's really, really hard. And it's, it's, you know, you take a chance if you want to do it again, like Colin Moore said, you know, that's why Jesse can't even get to that point in his thought process because he's like, I'm considering it, but I have no idea what my future holds coach. He says, I will talk to you. I I look forward to seeing you soon. But at this point, I have no idea what my future holds. You know, even if you look at Laird, Laird does have another year, right? Yes, he does. Laird's He's a got junior. He's not redshirted yet either. But Laird's in a weight class that's pretty wide open. Laird's in a weight class it, where it you're saying. He's in a weight class where Laird could punch through, depends on where he's on the bracket, and make a semifinal, right? Like, depends what quarter he's in, right? Um, yeah. But he's a guy that's, you know what I mean? Like, that's, that's the thing that's got to be heart-wrenching to you guys, obviously. Um but once the, you know, I, I, I don't even need to ask you the question. I can clearly see where you are. Um, everybody else is like, oh, the logistics and the trickle down effect and how it's going to affect scholarships and nine. You can point- figure it out. You know, it, it, there's always what ifs in life. You can figure it out. And just, and, and I don't think it's fair that they just do it for the seniors. I think they should do it for all the classes. And because it doesn't affect your scholarship dollars, I'm going to commit money to Ethan Laird next year, no matter what. So that's not like I'm adding or or adding an, an extra freshman, and then I have to add, you know, my senior returning from this situation. It's uh, Ethan is going to get what Ethan's going to get because Ethan's good at what he does. Yeah. So that's zero varying, but he should get another year. Uh, he should be able to use this year as a redshirt year, straight up. That's just a fact because w- nobody cares about the regular season. Nobody cares about the conference tournament. You're always measured on the last few yep. days of the season, and that's the NCAA tournament. Mark, we're so and everybody. Mark- yeah, we're March Everybody focused. We're that. March focused, and that was the thing. Like, you know, I mean, look at Iowa. Look at Iowa's whole situation. They they were yeah. they were they were going to run the table. What you can say what you want to say. They were going to blow this tournament out I, of the water. I, they were going to win by twenty plus points, in my opinion. Yep. Um. I hey, agree. man, things happen. I get it. But they were set up, man, and they were going to run it from wire to wire. They were going to be a consensus yep. one, wire to wire. And what Penn State's done in the last, you know. Three, four seasons, they've done it out of the, the eight out of the last nine they've won, right? Where they've just been like yep. over the top, better than everybody. Iowa was what Penn State was in eight of those nine, you know, six, five Agreed. or six of those seasons, obviously, when they had David Taylor, Ruth, and then Zane, yep. and then, you know, they had this overlap with Nolf. You know what I mean? Like they had these teams with Mega Lutus. I mean, we could, Bo Nickel, you know, they've had these all time greats on yep. eight teams, right? Right, and, and and I think Iowa was in that position, and we I think everybody knows we already know the mentality of the Brands brothers. You know, yeah. I mean, <laughs> if, I haven't tried to get a hold of them yet, but I don't even know. Like, I don't even know how I would approach talking to those guys because they you live it, John. You really live it. You love this, like you just said. You love this, and and Joel Greenlee's like I don't. I go, hey Joel, can I call you back for another call? Well, yeah, I ain't got nothing to do. I got guys to train. I can't recruit no one. I can't do anything. I got all the time in the world is what Joel Greenlee said to me. It's a fact. Like I'm like, why do I even need to go to the office? Because there's nobody to deal with. The kids are out uh, off campus. I can't work out or train anybody. It's like I can do everything I need to do from home, which is going to drive me. I already said today, today's Sunday. It's not even Monday yet. I said the walls are starting to cave in already uh, at my house. And I love being here. I love my family to death. And it's great to have special, you know, extra time with them. But, man, I'll go stir crazy in, in another three days, no question. How crazy is it getting over there on the East Coast? You know, you obviously live in the biggest population center in America. Um, you know, I mean, you're at the crossroads. You're Philly, the city, you know, Boston, D.C., Baltimore. Everything's within a, a two-hour train ride at least, right? Yeah, not, yeah. Maybe not really Boston. Maybe not there. Boston, right? But, like. Newark, I mean, you're, dude, it's all right there. There's within where you are right now. There's 50 million people within an hour drive, right? No question, no question. Right? And they're they're going to start shutting down parks. They're 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 shutting down parks in PA. They're going to start like doing open because people are just getting outside, but they're not understanding the social distancing thing. They're just you know, and they're they're going to grocery stores. They're going to bars and stuff. It's yeah. like, what what are you doing? You know, I get it. We're, it's not like it's Armageddon. You don't need 90,000 rolls of toilet paper. You just you know, that's being a little greedy and stuff. So they got cops in the ocean in the brick Costco guarding the toilet paper because people are taking too much. In Brick, that's New Jersey. Starting to happen. In Brick, New Jersey. In Brick, New Jersey, in a Costco, they have cops guarding the toilet paper so that people only take two rolls per family. 
I hate the uglier side of humanity. I don't like that. Isn't you know it? I mean? That's not like man. now. Now you're being greedy to the point where you're affecting the livelihood of other people just because you want to have toilet paper for the next eight years of your life in your house. Yeah, I saw these two brothers in Tennessee that bought up all the hand sanitizer and wipes that they could in Tennessee. And then they were price right. gouging on uh, Amazon, and Amazon caught them and shut them down. And now the guys are like, what are we going to do with all this stuff we have? Yeah. Right? Should have well, thought hey, about the first place. You got what you deserve, you know? And that's the yes, way you did. Up. Yes, you did. You're, 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 but it's it's pretty crazy around here. Like, it, it, it's people are starting, people are listening, though, uh, in this area, is that people are like, the streets are empty, the roads, you know, the kids are outside doing their thing, but they're, they're outside. They're not in closed quarters, you know, they're small groups. Um, they're like baseball clubs, baseball is the big around where, where my house is. And they're saying the moral threat council is saying that, um, nothing for eight weeks, no practices, no, nothing, nothing under, nothing over 50 people can do anything, you know, uh, as far as gatherings. And like, I took my son to a baseball field today, just him and I, and threw the ball around and let him hit some swings and let him field some ground balls and stuff just to get out of the house. You know, yeah. my kid loves baseball, but he's going to miss his eighth grade baseball season now. And he's like the, the big man on campus, so to speak, because ninth grade's next year and it's high school. So he's dealing with it on his level. You know, he got his state tournament canceled. He's getting his baseball season canceled. My daughter's home from college and she doesn't want to be here. She wants to be at college. She's a freshman. So people are starting to listen, I think, Zeb, but I think we're in for a, a much longer period than people anticipate. Yeah, I'm, th I'm thinking six to eight weeks is probably a better, I think that's a better window. I don't think I would agree. Support. Four week thing. I don't think we're gonna go back to school. I don't know that, but um, listening to the governor talk today and um, talking to some other people who I work with, it sounds like it's going to be so. And the whole thing, like you just you really put it into perspective though, how your kid, your kid, your daughter, your, your son, your daughter, now your daughter wants yeah. to be in college. Where's she go? She goes to Kane University, which is about an hour north of us, and she's a freshman. She's a second semester freshman. She absolutely loves it there. She's doing great academically. She plays volleyball there. She was training spring season it just got yanked and she's like i want to go back to college and i'm like that's good but right now you can't um but it's it's it affects everybody in a different way but at the same level yeah man no doubt Ange, man that is wow we're, i think we're all just so lo I'm, i'll be honest with you i'm not lost at all i still get to talk to you <laughs> uh, I'm going to be doing online classes You're with getting my some students. great conversations here with a lot of good people, right? Yeah, and, and you know, I mean, it, and I'm not being selfish. I am to a degree, but like, just if I'm, you know, like you guys are just, your hearts are ripped out and everything in your life, there's just the normalcy is just not there. Or we went hiking today. My kids and I, my one kid cried for a mile of a hike today and I wouldn't pick him up. Uh, we hiked yesterday. I love hiking, it's like one of my favorite things. Uh, but it's good for you. Too. Yeah, it gets you outside. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna cut. Uh, we're running out of wood, so I got I got a, a couple chainsaws. So I live on five acres of woods. I'm gonna cut some there you some go. trees that fell. I got some fell. They're leaners, and I gotta have one of my brothers help me. One will pull with the four wheeler. I'll cut. So I mean, there's there's a lot. And to normally do you'd have to do that on a weekend, but now you get to do it. Yeah, the week. yeah. Now I'm gonna be doing it. Probably I'll go into school tomorrow. Tomorrow's the last day they want us in. And then, um, that you have to teach after, uh, like online and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I, class I have Google class. Online. Yeah. I have Google classrooms. What I'll do is I'll, the notes I would have lectured to the kids and the activities and the vocabulary right. that we go over. I'll put that all on the Google classroom and they will be able to do a lot of the stuff, but it's going to be hard to give assessments and stuff like that. It really is. I mean, it's yeah. just basically getting in the work so that they get the days in and don't have to yeah. you know, extend the summer vacations. Yeah, I don't know what they're even going to do with that. If they're going to try and bring us back and – I don't even know. I couldn't even they tell can't. you. They can't. They absolutely can't. There's no way because summer, summer will go into – school will go into mid-July. It would be more than that. It would be like August. Yeah, and even more than that. It could go to the end of July. And then, and then, you just can't do that to kids. Yeah, it's, it's, the whole thing is – You know, it brings me back to that same scenario with the NCAA. They just got to do the right thing and figure it out. You know, yeah, we got kids coming in on scholarships like seniors are graduating. Give us the opportunity to figure it out. Don't just say, no, you can't do it. Because that's a, that's a, uh, that's, that's like a, 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 not a welcoming thought process. You need to just like say, okay, these kids got their lives ripped apart. You know, now the only good thing I think we have going for us is we're attached to basketball in this situation. Yep. Um, 
They didn't get to finish their conference tournaments. They thought about doing a 16 man turn, a 16 team tournament. But it's like you, you got you got to do the right thing. You're in business to help the student athletes. You can't just slam a door on them and just say, "Okay, we're done." You've already given the spring sports something. You got to give the even if it's the seniors. But then, how do juniors, seniors, uh, sophomores, and freshmen relate any different? They don't. I think you got to let schools and, and the NCAA figure it out. But yeah, there's a lot that goes into it. But don't just say, no, you can't do it because it's too many things to figure out. That's a crock of shit. You can figure anything out if you want. Dead period. Dead period. They hit you guys with this debt, this April 15th dead period. Um, that, really, that really throws you for a whole other level of no routine. The normalcy has been taken from you, right? Yeah. I mean, I think it's it's smart, though, because, again, the contact thing, you know, you don't want kids on campus. You don't want them traveling. You don't. It's just, a, you know, the precautionary thing that we're doing with the whole with the whole virus and stuff like that. So but the good news is we can still text and we can still call. Them. So we can still have communication with them. Uh, we just can't be physically in front of them. And we've communicated with all our recruits and let them know that the 15th is, you know, if it doesn't get extended, we will be scheduling visits immediately with you guys and stuff. So so we, we've kind of you know, reacted to that and, and it's been positive responses from our recruits, but it it's the right thing to do. It, it's just another step in, in the, in the whole precautionary measures of, of the virus. Uh, the New York RTC, the, the one that Columbia has where like Chimizo trains, yep. that's a standalone. That's the edge, right? That's Hoboken. Yep. Yep. That, they that's they, up they can York. still yep. train. The New Jersey RTC cannot train. Correct. Um, which is at Princeton and and uh, Rutgers. Rutgers. Um, yep. So the thing I brought up today is David Taylor has his own standalone facility. Yes. You know that. It's an M2 center, right? It's like uh, yep. in yep. Central PA within probably 20 minutes, half hour of, of State College, right? Yes. Yes. That is literally, besides the Jordans, who aren't even trying to make the Olympic team, you know, Jim and Jeff, Jor- uh, Jeff Jordan's kids, Bo, Mickey, Rocky, Yep. Those are some of the only people I know that have a standalone. Cody Pack's dad has legends of gold. Cody Pack's not trying to make an Olympic team. But there's not a lot of people who have opportunities to train, and we don't even know when the Olympic trials are going to be. Yeah, they just got postponed from the Bryce Jordan Center. <laughs> I don't know what to do. Every, I don't know what to do with my hands. I don't know what to do. Zeb, Zeb, that's exactly it. What do you do? You just got to play it by ear. You got to train alternate ways. I mean, it really stinks for those guys because – They've got their dream of the Olympic, you know, pursuit coming up, Olympic gold, and they got nowhere to train. Listen, the only nowhere person, the only person who had any idea what to do with themselves that I've talked to in all of this is Terval, because Terval had, had Desi today. He had Desi Russell and right. make the Olympics today. Yeah, yeah. He was like, "Oh yeah, what's the only sporting event in North America?" How did they let that go off? I, I, I yeah, he said that he said a doctor, an Ontario doctor, was like a local doctor was trying to get it shut down. Really? Yeah, because they did the they did the Greco, which we had a obvious, yep. our Greco and our women's like blew it out of the water, right? Yep. They had great days, and then you know Zane got caught and pinned today and didn't qualify the weight. Yeah, um, he overforced the leg lace. That's yeah, all he did. no, yeah, and the guy caught him, and the guy, hey, yeah. hey, so you know, he wanted it and. Once he got him on his back, he wasn't letting him off. You could see that. No, no. It's, it's tough not to get pinned when you're on your yeah, back. It really freestyle. is a freestyle, man. But, but it really is. Travell is the only person who had any perspective. He didn't know he was going to get back into America. He thought he was going to be able to <laughs> sneak in on a bus or something. I go, dude, it ain't happening. You ain't a good spickless. You're a monster. You're a moose. Yeah, he's giant. Yeah, he's, he's a gigantic guy. Anybody. But, you know, like, he was the only one that really knew. Like, he had a plan for Desi. Like, he, he was like, Desi's cool for eight weeks. He's like, Desi can wait, train, and run for eight weeks if he needs to. He don't need to. And Desi's a freak. He's a mutant. Desi is a freak, that's so for he sure. Don't, you know, he's a big man that can move. He don't need to do this like hard, grinding, training, because that's not how he came up anyway. Right, know? right. right. He, didn't, he came up through British Columbia and Vancouver, right? Came yeah. Up under yeah. A Euro- yeah. His dad was an Indian from India. Dad's from India. So he came up through a very different training system. Than what you're training your guys, right? So right. Travell had a plan. But what do you do? What do you do with a Cox and a Snyder? No, <laughs> that's my point. You can't just run and lift weights no, and get ready to beat no. either one of those guys. And and we're looking at one of the most anticipated matchups trials ever, ever. Dakin Burroughs. Yeah, 
Well, I mean, you can't just. Yeah. You just you, you yeah. gotta you gotta train the way you're used to training, and I don't know if you have the ability to right now. Colin Moore was like, you didn't know. He said Ross Thatcher has a place. Um, right, uh, because the Ohio State sh- was yeah, shut, shut down. Yeah, shut down. They're not Moran. April 10th, everything. Moran, Karchalava, he has a place. And then Jim, yep. J- Jeff Jordan. All that stuff's yep. within striking distance, but it's like, that. those aren't ideal. You want to be in that Ohio no, State room, not. this Taj Mahal that they just built you. <laughs> You know and that's mean? why you went there. You went yes. there to get the, you know, get done what you want to get done. And now, now you don't have that opportunity. So it's kind of like the Rocky. What is it, Rocky Four, where he goes out to Russia, yes. and Siberia? That's what I, I compared it to. I said, bit. dude, you're going to be running down Neff Roads, one of those roads out there in Champaign <laughs> County near the uh, near the Jordan. Like, you're going to be training in Neff Road. You're going to stay in Jeff Jordan's log cabin, and you're going to. Yeah, exactly. It's like the the there's this hot, Jeff's got like the sweet house in the woods, a cabin. And then across right. the way is where everybody trains in one of the camps. He calls it the farm or the the office is what he calls it. I was like, oh, you can okay. go to the office or down the road a mile is where right. I went to camp and where I was a counselor where Bo, Mickey, and Rocky were born and raised in this old farmhouse with a, like a little pole barn where you could have 12, 15, 20 kids. I go, you oh, can do wow. that. And he was like, yeah, that's a, yeah that, that would be cool. You know, he's a nice kid, but okay. <laughs> okay. Hey, um, is there anything I'm missing, man? You know, I, I talk about a lot of stuff and I lead a lot you know, here, but is there anything that you, you I, I got think, for me? I think assistant coaches are, are affected pretty, uh, even maybe more, you know, like what I've learned over the last three years being a head coach is that you have to distance yourself a little bit uh, because you got to deal with the, the bureaucratic stuff and you got to put your, you know, your professional, your administrative hat on and you got to disappear sometimes and, and you got a great assistant, like for instance, Nick Bezley. He's, he's the best in, in the world, you know. And he was as devastated as the guys. That much I'll tell you. Like I had to talk to him as much as I had to talk to the guys just to make sure he was okay. Um, and because him and Jesse D and him and Dean and and uh, you know Ryan Wolf, my other assistant with uh, Ethan and uh, Cloud, were so connected to those guys, and that's the way it's supposed to be. And um, you know, they're like their big brothers almost, you know, even though they're coaches and stuff, but it's like, those guys were just as devastated as, as, as a head coach was. And as, you know, as the athletes were, um, and, and you know, it's, they pour their heart and soul into it just because they know what it was like when they were athletes, they were successful. They got it done on the, in, on, in the national tournament and they wanted nothing more than to have those kids they work with have the same experience and, and, and memories that they had. And that's what tears them apart. No doubt, man. I talk to Nick a lot, and he's I mean, Nick wants to win, man. Nick wants to win, and he wants and he and he'd lay in All traffic. He wants to do. He'd lay in traffic for his guys, you know. He would. Everything in his life is about competition and about winning. Yeah. And and he goes about it the right way. He doesn't cut corners. His integrity's off the charts. His his character's off the charts. You, you couldn't ask for a better guy for like Jesse, guys like Jesse and Dean to have in his corner. And, and, you know, yeah, and Ryan Wolf is no different. You know, they're, that's why they're great guys. And that's why they work at Ryder, because they're they're passionate about their kids. Awesome, man. Well, hey, I'm going to cut this live. I'm going to cut this. Will you stick around for a little bit so I can talk to you post? Yep, yep, absolutely. Po- post interview. Just hang on. Let me, let me cut this live interview. And I appreciate your time, Hange. Um, good Anytime, luck to you guys Jeff, moving forward. And I hope we find some normalcy here. Let me, let me cut this guy off here. And it's been awesome talking to you.